नमस्कार स्टूडेंट्स होप यू आर हेल एंड हार्टी टेकिंग केयर ऑफ योर हेल्थ एंड योर स्टडीज टुडे इफ आई आस्क यू हाउ ह्यूमन सिविलाइजेशन इवॉल्व विद द अर्ली साइंस ऑफ ह्यूमन सिविलाइजेशन द नेम्स ऑफ मेसोपटामिया एंड इंडस वैली ऑफन कम्स टू अर माइंड दीज आर द प्लेसिज which actually developed along river side nothing has actually changed even today most of the areas along the river side are densely populated what are the reasons and the story of a river how it takes birth where does it flow and finally where does it submerge the entire journey of the river yes that's what we are going to cover today in chapter number 3 of our class 9 geography book contemporary india 1 the name of the chapter is drainage the term drainage describes the river system of an area small streams flowing from different directions come together to form the main river which ultimately drains into a large water body such as lake or a sea or an ocean the area drained by a single river system is called a drainage basin from here we see the different drainage patterns the streams within a drainage basin form certain patterns depending on the slope of the land underlying rock structure as well as the climatic condition of the area these are dendritic trellis rectangular and radial patterns let's take up the dendritic pattern which develops where the river channel flows the slope of the terrain the stream with its tributaries resembles the branches of a tree thus the name dendritic a river joined by its tributary Most of the rivers of peninsular India originate in the Western Ghats and flow towards the Bay of Bengal. First of all, we will talk about the Himalayan rivers. The major Himalayan river are Indus, the Ganga, and the Brahmaputra. These rivers are long and are joined by many large and important tributaries. A river along with its tributaries may be called a river system. The first of Himalayan river is the Indus river system. The river Indus rises in Tibet near Lake Mansarovar. Flowing west, it enters India in Ladakh district. Several tributaries, the Jaska, the Nubra, the Shok and the Hunza join it in Kashmir region. The Indus flows through Baltistan and Gilgit and emerges from the mountains at Tok the Satluj the Bias the Ravi the Chenab and the Jhelum join together to enter the Indus near Mithan Kot in Pakistan beyond this the Indus flows southwards eventually reaching the Arabian Sea east of Karachi the Indus plain has a very gentle slope with a total length of 2900 kilometers the indus is one of the longest rivers of the world a little over a one third of the indus basin is located in india in the states of jammu and kashmir now according to the regulations of indus water treaty 1960 india can use only 20% of total water carried by indus river system The water is used for irrigation in the Punjab, Haryana and the southern and western part of Rajasthan. Now, from Indus, we move to the Ganga river system. The headwaters of Ganga called the Bhagirathi is fed by Gangotri glacier and joined by the Alaknanda at Devprayag in Uttarakhand. At Haridwar, the Ganga emerges from the mountains onto the plains. The Ganga is joined by many tributaries from Himalayas a few of them being major rivers such as Yamuna Ghaggar Gandak 
and Kosi. The river Yamuna rises from Yamnotri glacier in Himalayas. It flows parallel to the Ganga and as a right bank tributary meets the Ganga at Alava. The Ghaggar, the Gandak and the Kosi rise in the Nepal Himalaya. They are the rivers which flood parts of the northern plains every year, causing widespread damage to life and property, but enriching the soil for extensive agriculture land. The main tributaries which come from peninsular uplands are Chambal, the Betwa and the Son. These rise from semi-arid areas have shorter courses and do not carry much water in them. Enlarged with the waters from its right and left bank tributaries, the Ganga flows eastwards till Farakka in West Bengal. This is the northernmost point of Ganga Delta. The river bifurcates here. The Bhagirathi Hugli flows southwards through the deltic plains to the Bay of Bengal. The main stream flows southwards into Bangladesh and is joined by Brahmaputra. Further down the stream, it is known as Meghna, the mighty river with waters from the Ganga, and the Brahmaputra flows into the Bay of Bengal. The delta formed by these river is called Sundarban Delta. Now I must tell you that Sundarban Delta derived its name from the Sundari tree which grows well in the marshlands. It is the world's largest and fastest growing delta. It is also the home of Royal Bengal Tiger. The length of Ganga is over 2400 kilometers. Next in the list is the Brahmaputra river system. The Brahmaputra rises in Tibet, east of Mansarovar Lake, very close to the source of the Indus and the Satluj. It is slightly longer than the Indus and most of its course lies outside India. It flows eastwards parallel to the Himalayas. On reaching the Namcha Barwa, it takes a U-turn and enters India in Arunachal Pradesh through a gorge. Here it is called the Dihang and it is joined by the Dibang and the Lohit and many other tributaries to form the Brahmaputra in Assam. Brahmaputra is known as the Songpo in Tibet and Jamuna in Bangladesh. In Tibet, the river carries a smaller volume of water and less silt as it is cold and a dry area. In India, it passes through a region of high rainfall. Here, the river carries a large amount of water and considerable amount of silt. The Brahmaputra has a braided channel in its entire length in Assam and forms many river-lying islands. Every year during the rainy season, the river overflows its banks, causing widespread devastation due to floods in Assam and Bangladesh. Unlike other North Indian rivers, the Brahmaputra is marked by huge deposits of silt on its bed causing the river bed to rise. The river also shifts its channel frequently. From here, we move to the peninsular rivers. The main water divide in peninsular India is formed by the Western Ghats, which run from the north to south close to the western coast. Most of the major rivers of peninsula such as the Mahanadi, Godavari, the Krishna and Kaveri flow eastwards and drain into Bay of Bengal. These rivers make delta at the mouths. They are numerous small streams flowing west of the western ghat. The Narmada and Tapi are the only long rivers which flow west and make estuaries. The drainage basins of peninsular rivers are comparatively small in size. The Narmada Basin The Narmada rises in Amar Kantak Hills in Madhya Pradesh. It flows towards the west in a rift valley formed due to faulting. All the tributaries of Narmada are very short and most of these join the main stream at right angles. The Narmada Basin covers part of Madhya Pradesh and Gujarat. From Narmada, we move to the Tapi Basin. The Tapi rises in Satpura Ranges in the Betul district of Madhya Pradesh. It also flows in a rift valley parallel to the Narmada, but it is much shorter in length. 
Its basin covers part of Madhya Pradesh, Gujarat, Maharashtra. The coastal plains between Western Ghats and the Arabian Sea are very narrow. Hence, the coastal rivers are short. The main west-flowing rivers are Sabarmati, Mahi, Bharatpua, and Pariyar. After Tapi, we move to the Godavari Basin. The Godavari is the largest peninsular river. It rises from the slopes of Western Ghast in Nasik district of Maharashtra. Its length is about 1500 kilometers. It drains into the Bay of Bengal. Its drainage basin is also the largest among the peninsular rivers. The basin covers parts of Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, Odisha, and Andhra Pradesh. The Godavari is joined by a number of tributaries such as Poona, the Vardha, the Parnhita, and Manjira, Van Ganga, and Pan Ganga. The last three tributaries are very large because of its length and the area it covers. It is also known as Dakshin Ganga. The Mahanadi Basin The Mahanadi rises in the highlands of Chhattisgarh. It flows through Odisha to reach the Bay of Bengal. The length of the river is about 860 kilometers. Its drainage basin is shared by Maharashtra, Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand and Odisha. From Mahanadi, we talk about Krishna Basin. Rising from a spring near Mahabaleshwar, the Krishna flows for about 1400 kilometers and reach the Bay of Bengal. The Tungabhadra, the Koena, Ghat Prabha, Musi, Bhima are some of its tributaries. Its drainage basin is shared by Maharashtra, Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh. After Krishna, it comes the turn of Kaveri. The Kaveri rises in Brahmagiri ranges of Western Ghats and reaches to Bay of Bengal in south of Kodulore in Tamil Nadu. Total length of the river is about 760 kilometers. Its main tributary are Amaravati, Bhavani, Hemavati, and Kabini. Its basin drains part of the Karnataka, Kerala, and Tamil Nadu. The river Kaveri makes the second biggest waterfall in India, known as Sivasundram. The hydroelectric power generated from the falls is supplied to Mysore, Bangalore, and the Kolar Bolt Field. 71% of world's surface is covered with water, but 97% of that water is salt water. Of the 3% that is available as fresh water, three quarters of it is tapped as ice. From rivers, now we move to the lakes. You may be familiar with the valley of Kashmir and famous Dal Lake, the houseboats and the shikaras, which attract thousands of tourists every year. Similarly, you may have visited some other tourist spot near a lake and enjoyed boating, swimming, and other water games. Imagine that if Srinagar, Nanital, and other tourist places did not have a lake, would they have been as attractive as they are today? Have you ever tried to know the importance of lakes in making a place attractive to tourists? Apart from attraction for tourists, Lakes are also useful to human beings in many other ways. Lakes of large extent are called the seas. India has many lakes. These differ from each other in the size and other characteristics. Most lakes are permanent. Some contain water only during the rainy season, like the lakes in the basins of inland drainage of semi-arid regions. There are some of the lakes which are the result of the action of glaciers and ice sheets, while the others have been formed by wind, river, action, and the human activities. The meandering river across a flood plain forms cutoff that later develop into Oxbow Lake. Spits and bars form lagoons in the coastal areas. Chilka Lake, the Palikat Lake, the Koluru Lake, lakes in the regions of inland drainage are sometimes seasonal. For example, the Sambar Lake in Rajasthan, which is a salt water lake. Its water is used for producing salt. Most of the fresh water lakes are in Himalayan region. They are of glacier origin. 
in other words they formed when glaciers dug out a basin which was later filled with the snow melt the bulal lake in jammu and kashmir in contrast is result of the tectonic activity it is the largest freshwater lake in india the dal lake bhimtal nainital loktak and barapani are some other important freshwater lakes apart from natural lakes the damming of the rivers for the generation of hydel power also led to the formation of lakes such as guru gobind sagar bhakra nangal project lakes are of great value to human beings a lake helps to regulate the flow of a river during heavy rainfalls it prevents flooding and during the dry season it helps to maintain an even flow of the water lakes can also be used for developing hydel power they moderate the climate of the surroundings maintain the aquatic ecosystem enhance natural beauty help develop tourism and provide recreation rivers have been of fundamental importance throughout the human history water from the river is a basic natural resource essential for various human activities therefore the river banks have attracted settlers from ancient times which we discussed in the opening of this session these settlements have now become big cities but as soon as they developed we started polluting these rivers the growing domestic municipal industrial and agricultural demand for water from rivers naturally affects the quality of water as a result more and more water is being drained out of the rivers reducing their volume on the other hand a heavy load of untreated sewage and industrial effluent are emptied into the river the effects not only the quality of water but also the self cleansing capacity of the river for example given the adequate stream flow the ganga water is able to dilute and assimilate pollution loads within 20 kilometers of large cities but the increasing urbanization and industrialization do not allow it to happen and the pollution level of many rivers has been rising concern over rising pollution in our rivers led to the launching of various action plans to clean the rivers i think you must have heard about such action plans how does our health get affected by the polluted river water you must be aware about this as well now think about it a life of human beings without fresh water imagine if we have to face a situation like this hence we have to save these resources to save the mankind let's try to know how much actually we have learned and understood in today's session all right so My first question is the area drained by a single river system is called a very good drainage the area drained by a single river system is called a drainage very good next question the world's largest drainage basin is of the river amazon very good question number 3 the largest delta in the world is Sundarban Delta very good so next is an area through which a river and its tributaries flow is called basin so the ganga action plan phase 1 started in the year 1985 it is very good okay so now you'll be having some questions and some options to it you have to pick the correct option my first question is what is the total length of river krishna is it 13 12 kilometers is it 1500 kilometers is it 1400 kilometers or it is 1250 kilometers it is 1400 kilometers very good 
Moving on, the Ganga and Brahmaputra rivers join together and forms the dash before submerging into the Bay of Bengal. Sundarban Delta, estuaries, water divide or lagoons. It is Sundarban Delta. Very good. In the final stage, before meeting the seas and oceans, river break into various streams, and they are called as tributaries, deltas, estuaries, or distributaries. Correct answer. They are called distributaries. A lake formed when a meandering river is cut off from the main stream is known as oxbow lake, glacial lakes. Lagoons or man-made lakes. Correct. They are called oxbow lakes. River Brahmaputra takes a hairpin turn from Namcha Barwa, Majuli, Dihang or Dibang. It is Namcha Barwa. My last question to you is: Which is not a common feature formed by a river while flowing through plains? Your first option is flood plains. Second is meandering. Third, leaves or D is the tributaries. It is the tributaries. The tributaries are not a common feature formed by a river while flowing through the plains. River, the lifeline of humans. And finally. It's a gift of nature, which we should all take care of. With this, we come to the end of this video. We'll be back with many more new topics. Till then, stay safe, stay healthy, and keep studying. Namaskar.